Hey guys, E21 Sammy here, and I am here with my good friend Brandon Jones from which YouTube channel? Let's go B Jones. I'm gonna put the link down at the bottom. He is the man. What's good? I'm, I'm the king of Itaewon, but he is the king of soul. The king of soul. So today's video is about how expats like ourselves mm -hmm. succeed in Korea. So mm -hmm. most of you know my story. You know, I've been here 10 years. Um, I started out just as a tourist um, and just I, I did the teaching thing and then just loved the country so much that I, you know, started working in clubs, started working in corporations, started my own company, and that's where I am today. Brandon has a similar story, so why don't we start off right away, and, you know, first of all, Brandon Jones. How's it going, you guys? Let's go be Jones. So I guess my Chaggy Soge. Yeah. My introduction. <laughs> so, um, the quick, Who are you? Yeah, who are you? The quick version of me is I'm a little bit different than a lot of people who came to Korea, like the main reason why they come. A lot of people come because of... I love K-pop, or I want to find a job, I want to study. For me, it was something to do before I started uh, graduate school. So in the States, I was a scientist. I came to Korea to do a one-year gap year as a teacher, and that somehow turned into, I know, I've been there like almost five years. Now, how long ago was that? So five years ago. Yeah. Um, and I, how old are you? I'm 28 now. 28, 28 so Western. after Western. university. Right, so after university. Uh, uh, 20, 22, 23 I came about. Okay. So I came to a small city called Sangju. It's in Gyeongsangbukdo. So if you guys saw the drama Kingdom, that's uh, Sangju. So I taught there elementary school in a public school for about two years. Moved to Seoul. Started working hagwons. It wasn't for me. I ended up in a modeling competition. Got third place. And then from there, I switched to um, pure entertainment. So I do modeling, acting, entertainment tv program stuff like that and how did we meet okay let me see when i first met you let me think that was Has right when i moved to itaewon it, it might have been when i was a student at sogong studying slash still teaching yeah because my visa was still good um i saw an ad online looking for a promoter so i ended up working for sammy as the best promoter i'm sorry <laughs> as the best promoter at my old clubhouse mate so that was that was three years ago yeah three I was, years ago I was, i'm sorry i was good you were i was you were and because also you speak korean yeah my you're fluent in korean yeah I'm, I'm, compared to like what was it three years ago my korean was well, good enough. You were, I mean, Korean. Your Korean was good enough that you could have work. you could have a conversation like, "Hi, how are you? We want to come into my club." Type Correct. Of thing. You know, casual conversation. And I, I learned uh, phrases just to help me with work. So if it was raining, it's it's raining, and you don't have an umbrella. Come to this club. It's free. <laughs> it's hot. Come to this club. Your girl looks very like she's sweating. We have aircon. <laughs> Those are fun days. Those are fun days. So we've known each other, got to be about four years. Yeah, good four long years. time. Four years. So you've now been in Korea for... Over four and a half years. Over four and a half years. So you have become quite successful quite quickly. Correct. I'll just give you a little bit. He doesn't... I don't know if he wants to toot his own horn. But I'm going to put a link to his YouTube channel and to all of his Instagram, Instagram, Instagram and all of that stuff. And... Uh, he's going to be teaching me how to develop a channel because his channel is good. He does reaction videos and he's got how many subscribers? Um, so my ch my personal channel has about 5,000 subscribers on it. And there's a reason for that. Like I ha I'm working a lot so I don't get to edit as much as I want to. But I do do a lot of collaborations with other big YouTubers like Big Marvel. I've worked with like Shin Nin before. A bunch of people I've worked with, I did stuff for like Pug B, I just did like a J Park music video. So the people I've worked with and their channels, if I jump on it, they filter they, down. they pop up yeah, or yeah, they yeah. get more well, pop up. And that's why I'm hoping that your viewers will enjoy a little different style Correct. because as you know, my channel is a little bit more about just my life, mm -hmm. you know, how I live here, how I go. And again, the premise of this story is how do expats like us become successful. Now, the, the reason I chose you as well is because there's so many videos out there today with teachers or people who are successful, but not visible minorities. Mm -hmm. That's now, correct. white people are visible minorities in Korea, but what I mean is not white in Korea. Well, it's the same thing with teaching. Yeah. Oh, 
the old teaching a couple about yeah. five years ago. You don't yeah. see it anymore. When I first yeah. came to Korea, if you looked on job postings, it did say blonde hair, blue eyes, yeah. Caucasian preferred. <laughs> You don't see that as much anymore. anymore no. Like maybe it's still five, there. It's still there. Five years ago, let's yeah, say fifty percent. Fifty percent of the postings now it's a ten percent, which is a, which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, teaching. So the one thing I say about teaching, your race does not depend on your teaching ability. No, no. I mean that's a that's a Korean thing, and and a, it, it's not a Korean thing. It's the customers. Cust yeah. It's not the schools or anything. It's the customers. Mm -hmm. and we've, Mom and dad are paying. So there's so many videos out about that here. But what I what I wanted to focus on was yes, there are some roadblocks, mm -hmm. uh, cultural, socioeconomic, and etc. But for not being female, white, uh, Western, mm -hmm. for us to become successful mm -hmm. here is. I don't want to say impressive. I just it's unique. Correct. It's a unique situation. Uh, the 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 very popular foreigners are usually the, the white the white ones. Uh, there are there are a couple. There's Sam Oyoke. Oh, Trudy. Oh, sorry, I can't pronounce his last name. I, Sam, this man, <laughs> that sounds like a food. Sam Oyoke. Oh, he's very um, popular. He's he's a great guy. So I think, I mean, there are like white yeah. foreigners, yeah. whatever. Non-white yeah. foreigner, yeah. Sam Otri is to number one. Number for, one, and, and also then for black. There's Hanuk, an Indian Indian guy, Lucky. Lucky, that's right. Um, Lucky. Lucky. There's also um, Navid, which is um, Pakistan, yeah. but he does some stuff on the, yeah. the side. Um, and and the common denominator there is they all speak fluent Korean. Correct. And that is one thing I don't do <laughs> is I am not fluent. I am probably out of level out of one to five. I'm probably a level one point five. Really? After uh, ten years? After ten years? I thought I was bad. You know, I thought I was bad. Come I can on. speak Korean, but the problem is, is because I'm so old, mm -hmm. and and we talked about this before the age thing in Korea. I don't have to learn the honorific. I don't have to speak in respect to somebody Truth. because I'm older than everybody. Truth. So I speak. At equal or lower level of uh, communication. Mm -hmm. So when I'm speaking to my coworkers or my friends or my guests, I'm speaking in very casual Korean. And my Korean level is like just all about, hey, how you doing? How's it going? Nice to see you. I missed you. Thank you for coming. Let's go have a drink. That's yeah. basically it. The club stuff. When I'm at work, I'm speaking in English because my team all speak English. And then when I'm in corporate situations, then there has it's to business. be a translator because it's business and also because the people are usually my age or older. So I don't know how to speak mm -hmm. in that level. And as a sign of respect, I will not. Because you don't want to make that mistake. Exactly. I will not speak Korean mm -hmm. because I don't want to make a mistake and disrespect anyone. Mm -hmm. Even yeah, even though they understand that I'm a foreigner. It's kind of the same for me. If I get a... A direct message from like a, a PD name or something. Depending on the conversation, I might just say like, "Here, Korean friend, just <laughs> do this translation for me. Set my stuff up." But on set, I can do yeah pure Korean. Yeah, and it's kind of like my listening is very good. So if I'm modeling, I know what the director's saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to stand up, do this, yeah. do ABC. because it's the same thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I that's how how I learned my Korean is that at the club, repetition. The same at repetition. I kind of figured mm -hmm. out what it was that they were saying. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do speak good in my life. I did speak nine languages. Oh, oh damn! Right, so Sri Lanka, right? Sri Lanka. No, no. I was born in Beijing, so I Beijing. learned Mandarin, oh. then Italian. Oh god! Dang. Then uh, English and French. I didn't speak English until I was six years old. You're Canadian, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm a Canadian Mon citizen. Montreal? Toronto. Okay. And, then, and I spoke Sri Lankan. And then uh, Spanish and Portuguese. God, and man. German, <laughs> Korean, and a little bit of Japanese. Man, you should just become a translator. Oh, God, no. <laughs> I, I can fluently speak four languages now. Japanese, the Chinese, I, I forgot. I mean, that was 45 years ago. Mm -hmm. So anyway... Let's get back. Okay. This is the other thing. Is like my videos. We were talking about this earlier. My videos. I'm talking, talking, and then I'll go off on the, the tangents. You good? <laughs> but I don't do edits, so that's why we were talking about one take, this one take, one take. So let's get back to the focus story here. Is how did you uh, fall into? You said you went to a modeling contest, correct? And you won third place. So how did you? get into that modeling contest like what was it um, all about like why did you i mean you do have a unique look so and i the, remember back in the day you had a really cool look the straight hair yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh let's see around that time i was working at some hogwan like how i got into modeling. i was working at some hogwan 
some something happened. We're gonna need to get in some something something happened. And um it was like my lowest day. I was having a really bad day. Am I staying in Korea? Am I leaving Korea? And I'm just I'm just studying in a what's it called? Taco Bell and this photographer guy comes up. This guy comes up to me. And the thing with Koreans sometimes when they see a, a black guy, a lot of the times it's yo, what's up, dog? Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> And uh, this guy came up to me, and I'm at this moment, I'm like, I'm going home. Like, I don't care. If this guy says that to me, <laughs> we having a fight. The photographer was just like, I like your style. You're, you look good. I want to take a picture of you. And that flipped my switch. I was at the, I was at negative 100%. Dark place, whatever they call it. And that one dude put some positivity in my mm. life. So then I started doing some, some um, tiny, like, shoots, trying to get profile up. I had a friend who said, hey, I liked your photo. There's a modeling competition. Come join it. I went to the competition. But actually, before I went to the competition, I was teaching, and my boss wouldn't let me go. And uh, lost that job. <laughs> Not lost. You quit that I, job. Uh, okay. There was, there was a huge argument pursuing, and the one thing I learned in Korea is like, a lot of people would try to lie. Hmm. So you, sometimes you gotta have evidence, so you wanna screen cap and record. So he lied about something, and I said, here's the evidence. So he's like, oh man, I gotta let this kid go. So I was working, and then I, I got third place, but the, the what broke the camel's back, what is it? I had a commercial shoot with Gongyu, and they were like, you can't go. And I was just like, I'm quitting anyways. Like, my last day's in two days. I'm gonna go work with this guy and get famous. <laughs> And yeah, the rest is history. So I worked with like um, worked with Samsung a lot. Uh, what is it? I've done a Samsung last week actually. Just got offered to do another Samsung. Passing up on that. I saw the the watch one. Yeah, that was oh the massage massage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a smart. They sent me to Spain. So I've done S8, Note 10, Buds, and computer monitor for Samsung. Um, I worked for Kia, I worked for Hyundai, Google, So these, these everyone. So is it directly with Samsung Marketing or do you have an agency that does that? Uh, I have an agency. There's mm. different types of agencies in Korea. There's like uh, model agencies, mm. there's like casting agencies, mm. and then there's kind of like the both. They, mm. they do a little both. Um, you have, you have I, your foot in, in several people. That's what I yeah. found here is even with the jobs, you have to like throw a big net out there mm -hmm. to different kinds of uh, recruiters or employers. Mm -hmm. And then they will always contact you and you select which job you Correct. want. And it's image. A lot of it's image based. So that's, that's, that's the one thing about the teaching thing. It's not, it's, it's weird mentality. Your race doesn't depend on your t teaching ability, but for entertainment, I can't be mad, be like, you chose the white model over me. It's image yeah, based. Yeah, so I, yeah. Acting is a different yeah, thing. Yeah, you can't, is a different you're just like, thing. oh, but you can't get too mad about it. Um, so what advice would you give to someone who would be interested in trying something different? Now, first of all, uh, the main question that most people will have, mm -hmm. my viewers are predominantly either American or um, Middle Eastern or European. Mm -hmm. Uh, not a lot of K-pop fans because I don't focus a lot on K-pop. So uh, Brandon's fans who are watching today, it's not a lot of K-pop <laughs> on here. This is more about living in Korea as a as a human being, right? What kind of visa do you have to have? Uh, so that's where it gets tricky. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of red tape. Yeah. The most legal visa would be an F visa. Yeah. So can you work on an E visa? I'm on an E6. I'm on an E6, which means entertainment. So yes. getting E6 is a very hard. Yes. E6 means like I have to show work from back home. Yeah. Saying like, hey, in America, I did modeling. Yeah. And then I have to say I have offers in Korea. Yeah. And then the government, like whatever, the, the Ministry Agency of um, Immigration, Ministry of Entertainment, whatever, yeah. whatever the name is, has to say, okay, I, this guy actually is a real model. Blah blah blah. And then paperwork, it's so much work. So much work. But then there's other visas you can technically work on. So like if you wanna let's let's test it H1. Well, okay. So 
again, I did a video before on visas mm -hmm. and how complicated it is and how more difficult it is to work in Korea yeah. legally than it is in the United States. Definitely. So I will just say this. There are two visas that you can legally work in the entertainment industry. An F visa, yeah. which is basically a permanent resident, which is what I have, or you're married, or you're a Korean uh, ancestry. Or speak Korean. Or F2. F2. Points, F2. Points, yeah. points visa. Points, points visa. You've been here a long time. So F visa means basically you are Korean. A, Korean. Yeah. a permanent resident long term. It's your green card. Yes. Yes. Which is what I have. Or a specifically an entertainment visa, which is an E6. E6 is the one year. You cannot be a teacher. You cannot be a student. You cannot be on a holiday visa. That is a very tricky visa. You have to double check with immigration. Correct. Okay. But legally, an E6 visa, which is an entertainment visa. One year or C4. C4 is the, C4, C4 C4 is the three months and it's easier to get, get yeah. than the E6. But E6 is the best because you can do E6 into F. Yeah. And then uh, the teaching visa, you cannot. You're very you'll get, you'll get in trouble. You're getting in huge trouble. Student visas, D2, D4, They're, you can, but you shouldn't. It's, should, it's, it's a lot of red tape. It is. It like is uh, D4, it's kind of like you can only well, be extra. And if you show your face, you only have one face showing yeah, time. So. It's a very restrictive. So let's just put it this way. Don't do it. <laughs> This kind of job is for someone who is a professional, A, a professional who has the resume, or B, someone who has been here a long time and can move into that. You can't just show up here and say, oh, I want to become a model. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that. So how would I go about that? Having, an, having had experience in broadcasting, okay. I'm a broadcaster in the past, mm -hmm. I've done uh, QVC, I've done Home Shopping Network in Canada. So what would I do when I land here? Uh, What's my first step? Let's not talk <laughs> about the visa, that's so, so complicated. The, the main Let's thing, talk about who do I call, what do I do? Uh, the, quickest, the quickest way, if you're trying to get into the industry is, join the Facebook groups, there's, there's Model Korea, Modeling in Seoul, there's search those those pages up and then a bunch of agencies always post so there is the casting agencies yeah. there's yeah 10 of them yeah. you still you just wait for them to post up agency a we're looking for a a spanish american whatever i don't care if you're white green blue black you still apply to that role even though it's wrong they're gonna say this role is not for you but we'll keep you on profile yeah. Yeah. so you send it to the casting agencies and then you also send it to the model the model model agencies. So it's just having more people in your pot. So for me- Casting the net. For me, yeah, casting the net. For me, there's a lot of, the uh, model agencies bring a lot of like white models in. And I, I know all the agencies, not a lot of them bring black models. Not, they do, but every 10 they bring is one black. Because of the needs. The needs. needs. Yeah. But for me, I live here. So they say, oh, we know Brandon, but just, Give Brandon a call. So He's already here. I'm already here. They're going to give me the role. They take their cut and it's good to go. Yeah. But it's really the Facebook groups. Instagram. Instagram is very powerful. Instagram and your hashtags. So if you're learn your Korean, Hangul and Weigukin model and Seoul model and blah, blah, blah model, people will find you. Mm. So Facebook groups, send emails and, and hashtags. Can you live? I live. Okay. There we go. It's that simple. It's it's the thing is um when I first met Sammy. How do I want to say it? if if you want to go full time modeling, you will struggle. So when I met Sammy, I was str struggling. Like I was making my bare minimum to live. I worked the job. The job was easy. It was nothing wrong with the job. The job was good. And that money that I received, okay, I got enough. I'm gonna do this other odd job. I got my thing. I struggled. I grinded for one year. Mm. After one year, oh, Brandon's not a cheap model because agencies, they start you at low price. Yeah. They're gonna give you the lowest low and they take that much. Yeah. Now I'm at that 50 whatever rank, so I'm good now. Like, you don't have I'm to work good. as much. I can, I can, you can work. pick and choose. I can, I can pick and you choose. You can pick and choose. I can pick and choose. So what I, was it? 
Back in the 90s, Naomi Campbell says, I won't get out of bed for less than $10,000. She said that. Okay. I'm now, not, I don't know which supermodel said that, but one of them said that. Okay, so that's, that's, that's a correct, <laughs> that's a perfect statement. One year ago, Brandon would say, oh, you're giving me $2? Not $2, but you're yeah. giving me $2? Yeah. Let's go. I need, I need the $2. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm like, All right, I'm not coming out unless you're giving me 20 yeah. That's not the rate, but yeah, that's, that's something. It, yeah. you, you, you set the expectation. As, as an example, I worked with a brand last week. And they said, we're going to give you this amount, this amount for five hours. Oh, I did the job a week later, same brand, but different division, different company. We're going to give you this amount for this amount of time working. That's double time for same pay. And they're just like, why am I going to devalue my time? Yeah. 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 One of I'm the, good. <laughs> one, of the, one of the secrets to success as a business man is never sell yourself short. Okay. Mm -hmm. If, you, if you're going for an interview, this is again a tangent, if you're going for an interview or a job prospect or you're bidding on something and Brandon offers me a job and he says, I want you to come and do this job for me. I mean, this is what happened to me at the club. Mm -hmm. uh, I had offers from clubs and one club offered me a job and they offered me at a pay rate. And they said, what do you want? And I said, well, you know, based on my six years of experience in Korea, mm -hmm. the number of people I have on my roller, on my phone, and the amount of money I'm going to bring into your company, this is what I expect. Per, that, yep, that's and, exactly how you say it. And, and that's how you place it. You don't say, I want. I said, this is what I'm going to bring to you. Mm -hmm. And this is what I feel that my time is worth. Yep. Because this is what I'm going to do for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, sell, you, sell, you don't say, I want you know, $100 an hour. You say, what I am going to do for you and the value and the experience that I'm bringing and the professionalism mm -hmm. and the amount of profit I'm going to make for you, I feel that my time is worth this amount. Mm -hmm. They're not going to say, oh, uh, no, uh, get the fuck out of here. They're going to make a counter offer. Mm -hmm. And that's what people are afraid of. They're always afraid of, oh, if I bid too high, they're never going to reply. Oh, it's better to bid no, high. No, they're going to give you a counter offer. So you, you always, it's always negotiation. People are afraid to negotiate. Mm -hmm. I was a salesman. Mm -hmm. So I know how to that's, do that. That's what happened. When I broke my hand, I was in a hospital. I had a $4,000 bill. I got, a, I got a job offer. And I'm, I'm surgery up. And the guy's is like, okay, so how much do you want? And I'm with my girl. She's saying, oh, just, just say this. Which is like the standard. I'm just like, nah. I'm going to say this. Because they have a budget. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just gave the biggest number. I was like, give me a thousand dollars. And he was like, um, okay, how about, uh, I was like, <laughs> I'll, I'll see you in a week. I'll see you in a week. I, I don't care. <laughs> but it, it, it can't hurt yeah. to, to do it. Or there's another way is budgeting. You can say your rate <laughs> as we say a hundred dollars. Um, um, let's say they offer you, hold on, you say a hundred dollars and you say, well, my rate is a hundred dollars. And, but I, it's my first time working with you. I'll do it for 90 because they offered you for less than that. And you can say, I'll give you a discount. I'll repost the images for you. I'll, I'll spread it to my fans. So that's one way to get your rate up and negotiate. Yeah, setting it high at the beginning is always better. So that, in a nutshell, is what another success story, different than mine. I mean, again, I'm still in the entertainment industry. The, the I guess... The common denominator here is what you said. And he's a lot younger than I am. Yeah. He said grinding. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. What that's not. That's how you're not being clear too long. I, I did this grinding. <laughs> grinding. That's, that's hard work, and you got to grind it out. Yeah. It was, it, us old guys say, "Put your nose to the grindstone." What? <laughs> I was born in 1968. You were born in 91. Okay. I graduated university and was working my first job. Damn, I, was, I wasn't even, I was a thought. I wasn't even a thought then. Okay. <laughs> I graduated high school in 1986. Okay, 1986, I graduated high well, school. Well, you look young though. That, that kimchi's powerful. <laughs> boing, boing. Anyway, so this is a how you can be successful. There mm -hmm. is success stories here in Korea. Is it easy? Absolutely not. Absolutely it's a grind. not. It is a lot of hard work. There's a lot of obstacles to overcome. Uh, language being the first thing, yep. culture being the second thing, uh, preconceived prejudices. I just did a, uh, uh, a vlog a couple of days ago on is there racism in Korea? And I'll say this, it's not racism, it's ignorance. Yep, 
I have a video. I have a video about that on my yeah. channel too. About and it's not racist. It's ignorance. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's ignorance and preconceived prejudice and bias. Mm -hmm. Okay, Koreans are not racist. They are just ignorant. Correct. Okay, and there's a whole. That's a different. That's a different, that's a different topic. topic. And we yep. both covered that in our vlog, so you guys can check those out. But. Uh, there is that hurdle that you need to cross. Um, but the number one thing is if you want to be successful, you got to be hardworking, you got to speak the language, and you got to integrate into the culture. Yeah. Language is very, very important. Very important. Uh, I, my friends tell me all the time if I just spoke Korean, I would be a Way better. billion times more successful. Yeah. And that's, I interviewed for a TV show about two weeks ago. They were just like two percent better Korean, and you would have got the thing. Yeah, we yeah. study two yeah. percent more, yeah. and we'll hit you back up. So yeah, it's just. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> so, uh, anything else that you want to add? I don't know, man. To my viewers, come out, hang on, eat it one, Globe Lounge. <laughs> it's high. Eat it one, Sammy. That's the that's where it is. Brandon's always with an entourage. Yeah. I used to before I was in the clubs. Before I started working in the clubs about eight years ago, I used to have the entourage. If you go on my Facebook and you look back about eight years, I had an entourage. I had a credit card debt back yeah. then, uh, but <laughs> I had an entourage. You know, it was about four or five girls, the same girls every week. And it was my little entourage. This guy puts me to shame. <laughs> puts me to shame. His girlfriend, probably one of the top... I'm gonna say five or six most beautiful women I've ever met, and she's not a girl. This is a lady. Woman, yeah, sure, she's a lady, and all her friends bad. I, and and her, she comes, he comes out with her and all of her friends, and I'm just like, and she's a fitness model or Pilates model. She does, she does some fitness stuff. She does some fitness I, stuff. I, I, so I, I, that, I, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> let's just leave it at that. Okay, we're not gonna go down this road. We're not gonna go down this road. Now, I'm not saying I don't do well. Okay. <laughs> the, the one thing is, the one thing is, I'm not gonna get a girlfriend. Yeah. Okay. That's. I mean, we talked about this before. Why I'm single. I have a lady friend who mm -hmm. you've met before. Yeah. My my friend Which, from, I'm, I'm from joking, Kazakhstan. I'm joking, I'm joking, the one I'm joking. from Kazakhstan. You yeah. met her. She's a stunningly beautiful woman, mm -hmm. and she's not a girl. She's a woman. But this guy uh, puts me to shame. Yeah. My, my girlfriend does a lot of my management stuff. So that's a. Uh, but you've. Uh, that's only a new thing. No, no, no. We've been. We've been. No, you know this one since last year. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Okay, only okay, one I was, I was, only one year. <laughs> okay. You remember? One, two, years. fifty years old. Okay, fifty I, years. I old. was like fifty years old. I was old. like, what girl are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, one year. That's nothing for Time me. To get me in trouble. I have T-shirts older than that. Okay, um, I have shit sitting in my toilet older than that. No, I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, for me, one year is not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so uh, prior to that, he, this guy was. All was, over the place. Wild. All over the place. He was a young kid. I mean, yeah. come on, a good looking young guy. Just I just <laughs> moved the soul to a good area. Yeah, yeah. From a country bumpkin. Oh, you know. Man. And where did you come from in the States? Uh, Maryland. Washington DC. Washington oh, okay. DC. Washington, so I mean DC. big city. Big city boy. Anyway, I wanna thank you very much. Thank to you very coming much. Out. You uh, Sammy. Bra Brandon Jones. Let's go be Jones. Check it out. I Live it. Love it. Eat you want Sammy. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs>